it's time to troubleshoot your connection brokers like a boss. Howdy RDS fans! Today I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot your connection brokers like a boss. I'm sure you already know this, but in case you don't, the connection broker is the brains of your RDS operation, provided you have more than one terminal server and you want to equally distribute users across all of your terminal servers in logical groupings of apps and desktops. We used to call this a farm, but it is now more accurately called a collection. Needless to say, it's very important that your RDS deployment's brain stays working and accessible all the time, or your users will get errors when they try to connect or reconnect to a collection to access those apps or desktops. In larger environments, organizations will place their RDS deployments in high availability mode, which means they will have two or more connection brokers deployed for fault tolerance, and there will be a shared Microsoft SQL Server instance, or preferably a SQL cluster, which houses the central SQL database that both connection brokers use to handle connection requests, keep track of what users are assigned to what servers, and so on. But in the vast majority of smaller RDS environments, the connection broker role will only be installed on one server, and it may even be running alongside other role services like RD Web and RD Gateway. When deployed this way, how the connection broker works is relatively opaque to the server administrator responsible for the RDS environment. For example, in this default single server connection broker deployment, did you know that the connection broker itself is also using a SQL database? You can look for Microsoft SQL amidst the list of installed programs on your connection broker, but it won't be listed there. Instead, when you first install the connection broker role on a single server, Microsoft installs a built-in instance of the Windows internal database. WID is in fact an instance of SQL Server, but it is designed to only be used by internal Microsoft applications, like RDS and Windows Server Update services, among others. Disappointingly, there are no management tools included with WID when it is installed as part of the Connection Broker role, so other than firing up the rather clunky, slow, and largely useless RDS Manager that shows up in Server Manager on your connection broker, you're pretty much flying blind when it comes to troubleshooting problems with it. So now it's high time for me to show you how to debug what's going on with your broker when it acts up. Typically, the first thing to do is check both the Terminal Services Session Broker and Terminal Services Session Broker Client Event Log areas in the Event Viewer. The admin channel typically contains major errors, such as the inability for the broker to connect to its SQL database, and the operational channel gives you information about how connections are being routed. While you can do this in the Event Viewer, if you use our complete monitoring and management bundle for RDS, the Remote Desktop Commander client has a consolidated Event Viewer that will automatically show you recent errors and warnings from all four of these logs alongside other RDS infrastructure roles and session hosts, which is especially handy if you have a larger RDS deployment with multiple brokers and don't want to visit each broker individually. You may get lucky and find an error message that has an easy fix once you look it up online. But by and large, when things go wrong with connection brokers, they go wrong at the database layer. Examples of this include, but are not limited to, 1. The database transaction log filling up or becoming inaccessible, 2. The database not coming back online after a reboot or after updates are applied. 3. Too many connections needing to be handled at the same time, often caused by things like login storms and temporary gateway failures, which causes timeouts when executing stored procedures, and many other issues. Now, if you are running high availability mode, which uses a dedicated SQL server or SQL cluster for your connection brokers, 
it's easy to launch SQL Server Management Studio to poke around and check for problems. However, if you've got a single connection broker tied to a Windows internal database instance, you are flying blind unless you take the following approach. By the way, this approach is also valid for high availability connection broker setups, and you can just skip ahead to the part in this video after I've installed SSMS and after I've connected to the SQL instance in the Windows internal database. First, download a copy of SQL Server Management Studio from Microsoft. It's free, and you should always install a copy of it on a single server connection broker for troubleshooting needs that may arise in the future. Once it's installed, the next trick is knowing how you can connect to the Windows internal database to inspect the database, check for errors, etc. In order to do this, you have to make a direct named pipes connection to the WID instance. Here's the server name syntax which I've highlighted for you. As this may change over time in later editions of WID, you will need to get a portion of the pipe path from the internal service name of the Windows internal database. Basically, it's the part of the internal service name that follows MSSQL dollar sign. You'll also need to set the encryption setting to optional. And of course, you'll need to be an admin on the broker server to make this connection in SSMS. Voila! We've now logged into the Windows internal database, and we can see the connection broker database. We can list tables, views, and stored procedures. Of significant note is the error log table. This is where the connection broker logs internal errors that arise when invoking stored procedures during normal operations. Oftentimes, if you're seeing things like semaphore timeouts and the broker event log entries, this error log table will be chock full of errors related to stored procedure timeouts or locks, related to things like login storms in the morning, after lunch, or when a gateway crashes and the broker fields tons of reconnection attempts. As I've talked about at length in my other videos, the connection broker stored procedures are not particularly optimized and don't scale very well, so if you have more than a few thousand users in your RDS deployment, you need to watch my videos on how to optimize your brokers and gateways for supersized RDS rollouts, and or consider breaking your deployment into two or more RDS clusters, each with its own set of load balance brokers and gateways. As an aside, you can also use the SSMS console to adjust advanced settings on the Windows internal database, such as maximum memory used, processor affinity, and even cost threshold for parallelism, which I've talked about in my previous connection broker optimization videos. All that being said, before you make any changes here, make a complete backup and snapshot of the virtual machine hosting your connection broker so you can roll back your changes if problems occur. If the error log table doesn't offer clear insight as to what may be going on with your connection broker database, it's time to dig deeper into the SQL Server logs history, which is buried under the management folder of the connection broker database in SSMS. These logs are comprehensive and tell you everything about what's happening with the database, including things like login failures, the database going offline, the database being placed in a suspect state, etc. These logs often tell you exactly what's going wrong with the broker's WID database, and by googling the errors found in these logs, you may gain quick insight on how to resolve the issue. For instance, I was recently helping a client troubleshoot a problem where their connection broker would go offline after some, but not all, Windows updates. After examining the SQL Server logs history, we saw that the database was going offline due to an Authenticode signing error after particular Windows updates were applied. We then found a thread online describing the issue in depth and potential mitigations for it. All this said, while understanding how to troubleshoot your connection broker can be helpful in diagnosing the root causes of failures, it cannot beat around-the-clock proactive monitoring of your RDS infrastructure roles so you can more quickly respond to remediate failures. This is where our Remote Desktop Canary tool can be a big help, as it routinely checks the health of these role servers and your session hosts by performing full synthetic login tests into your RDS environment. 
all the way to a client desktop or a client app launch. If anything goes wrong, if login times take too long, or if black screens appear, it will alert you with an email message that contains relevant error and event log messages about the problem, as well as screenshots of the login sequence to provide even more context. If you'd like to learn more about Remote Desktop Canary, you can visit its product page here, and you can start an affordable monthly subscription to it alone, or as part of our complete monitoring and management bundle for RDS. Our complete bundle also comes with the Remote Desktop Commander Suite, among other tools, that provide dashboards showing the health of your broker, connection success rates, and much more. Stay tuned for more conversations on connection broker scalability and reliability, including tips and tricks on promoting your brokers into high availability mode. Hi there. If you'd like me to make more of this content, please do one of the following. First, like this video and click the notification bell below to subscribe to the RDP Hard channel. Second, download my company's free Remote Desktop Commander Lite tool to help you manage sessions on your RDS and AVD farms. It's more powerful and much faster than the built-in RDS manager. Third, consider purchasing my RDP own book on how to secure your RDS environments. It's only $9.99 on Amazon Kindle. Fourth, start a subscription to one or more of my company's commercial RDS and AVT monitoring and management tools. We offer very affordable monthly subscriptions you can use for as little or as long as you need. I think you'll find we deliver more value than just about any other RDS monitoring tool in the marketplace. Thank you. See you on my next video.